Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you know me, you know I love all things Halloween and witchy, so today we'll be making this jellyfish tentacle apothecary jar, which I'm now realizing is kind of a mouthful to say. Anyway, if you follow me on Facebook, you've probably been waiting on this tutorial for a little while now, and here it finally is. Thank you guys for being patient with me and let's get to it. Alright, starting off, Unless you're working on a workbench that's okay to get messy, always protect your workspace. I'm working on my dining room table, so I've placed some old newsprint down to protect the area. Next, the materials you'll need for this tutorial will be a glue gun, a shallow container, some water, blue and green food coloring, Mod Podge, a paintbrush, and of course a quartz bottle and a label. Now let's get started on making those jellyfish tentacles. We're going to start off by putting the water in our container. I'm adding some blue food coloring to the water. You don't need to do this as it won't affect the outcome, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm adding some to help us see the next step better. Let's zoom in. To make the jellyfish tentacles, just pull the trigger on the glue gun and drag it across the water. This produces a really nice random, more organic squiggle effect. Next, take the handle of your paintbrush and push the tentacle under the water to help ensure that the whole tentacle is cooled and set. Your handle might stick to the tentacle on the thick end where you started because the hot glue tends to stay soft longer in areas where it's thicker. This is fine, just pull it off. Now just pull it from the water and lay it to the side. This is pretty simple, so I'm just going to speed up the process for the rest. While we do this, if your paintbrush handle is painted or wooden, I recommend maybe using something else to manipulate your hot glue tentacles. Because there is a risk of paint sticking to the glue and coming off, and or the glue not wanting to release from the wooden handle. Also, you're going to get those thin wispy hot glue threads, and again, this is fine, just pull them off. One more thing. When you pull your tentacles out of the water, do not set one on top of another. They will stick together. Not sure why. They should be cooled and set by this point, but they just do. Presumably because they're just jerks. So just don't set one on top of the other. They'll stick together, you'll be annoyed, and it's best just not to do it. All right, by now you should have a bunch of squiggle things. I'm sure that's the scientific term for that. Now it's time to get them into the bottle. I don't think there's really a wrong way to do this. You can try one by one to try and control where they go, or you can gather them all together and push them in that way. Either way, I'm speeding up this next part as well. We're done with that, and the next step is adding the water. I did this step off camera, but what I did was since I already had blue food coloring in the water I used for making the tentacles, I just added a bit of green in and poured some into the bottle, along with some clear to make the water less opaque. Now we're going to add the cork. If you'd like it more secure and you know you won't be opening this bottle again, you can always take some gel super glue and apply it all around the cork before inserting it into the bottle. Now it's time to add the label, and I've already made one up for this tutorial. Write in the comments below if you'd like a tutorial on how I make my labels. Okay, find your least favorite side to cover with the label, then paint a thin layer of Mod Podge over the back of the label, then place it over the side you wanted the label to be. And we're done! You may be wondering why the tentacles we just made are much clearer than those in the bottle that I previously made. Eventually these two will become more opaque. I assume it's from some sort of oxidation. If anyone knows the actual science behind this, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Either way, I'm going to show a photo of the bottle about a week later at the end of this video. And as you may also see, I now have two bottles and I only really need one. So I've decided I'm going to sell the other in my Etsy shop, which I'll link below. But before I end this video, I'd like to feature these pieces from Crow987. Check them out on DeviantArt, and if you'd like your art featured in my next video, shoot me a message on social media. All my links are down in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, comment below. Go ahead and check out the videos to the left. You know you want to. 
And hey, you might as well subscribe while you're at it. New videos are on their way and you don't want to miss them, do you? Of course not. Just click my face to the right to subscribe. Again, thank you all for watching. Bye!